Hey everyone and welcome, welcome to my healthy kitchen. My name is Bridget. I hope you're well and I hope you are safe. We have a very super <laughs> class uh, lined up for you today. We are doing a fabulous gluten-free, grain-free, egg-free, yeast-free, nut-free loaf of bread. And the reason I'm why I'm wearing my super superhuman t-shirt is because the ingredients that go into this bread and there isn't many ingredients like there's only a couple but the ingredients that go into it are pretty super for want of a better word super foods but they really are quite marvelous for our health so um i've been able to create a bread that yes doesn't have any of the stuff that we don't want in our bread these days but it still is satisfying it still tastes really really good and like always, when it comes to recipes, it's really, really simple to do. So the bread we're making today is a quinoa and chia seed bread. And I think it's time we probably get into that recipe because it's pretty easy to do. So come on down to my bench, come on down and join me. And if you are joining me live today, welcome. I can see uh, Georgina joining us live. Hi, Georgina. And if you're watching this as a replay, doesn't matter, you're watching it, that's all that counts. So in front of me now, I have our main two ingredients when it comes to this bread. Really simple as I was, as I was saying. So in this jar, I have quinoa seeds, which I'll talk about a little bit. And in this jar, I have our chia seeds. And literally, apart from a few more ingredients, that's kind of the two main things that you're going to need to grab. So when it comes to our quinoa seeds, the reason why I love this is this is such a great gluten-free alternative to flour, or any of those types of other uh, grains that are not so great for our health. So um, quinoa is completely gluten-free, now because it's not a grain, it's not a cereal, it's actually a seed, and it comes in a, in a, in a multitude of colors. Uh, the main ones are kind of a red, a white is what I've got here, or it comes in more of a black. Doesn't matter what color you get, they all have a very similar, similar nutritional content. And that's one of the reasons why I love them is that this quinoa here is so incredibly nutrient dense. I mean, in one, one cup of quinoa, you get nearly 10 grams of protein. So it's really high in protein. It's got a good amount of fiber, five grams of, of fiber in a cup as well. And it's really good for us because it's what is known as an essential uh, protein. So it has all nine essential amino acids, which means if you eat a lot of plant-based foods, and you want to make sure you're getting a good amount of protein this is one of the best things that you can do protein wise if you especially if you're on a plant-based diet so the first thing that you want to think about is obviously getting your quinoa and what we're going to do is we're going to soak it overnight so you do need to start this recipe the night before so you want to take 360 grams of your quinoa put it into a big bowl and then with that big bowl just cover it completely cover the quinoa completely with water so it's something that i've done here so 360 grams, which is about 12 and a half ounces of our raw quinoa. You're going to cover it just with normal cold water. Make sure it's completely covered, which is what I've got here. And then you're going to leave it overnight because it needs to soak. What's happening now while this quinoa is soaking in the water is it's helping to get a little bit soft, which is going to help with our bread. But the other thing that's happening is there is um, a type of acid found in um, quinoa and it prevents the absorption of minerals and vitamins a little bit. So in soaking the quinoa overnight, this is also known as sprouting, we are helping to lessen the effects of this phytic acid. And we're actually making the nutrients that are so nutrient dense, this quinoa, even more bioavailable to our bodies. So soaking is a good thing, overnight, lots of water. That is the quinoa. When it comes to the chia seeds, once again, gluten-free product. And what I really love about quinoa so incredibly high in fiber. This is such a good fiber tool to have in your healthy pantry toolbox because it has got almost by weight 40% fiber. And you know what fiber does, right? Fiber helps to keep us feeling full, so does protein. Fiber also helps to feed our healthy gut bacteria. So we need to have diets that are high in fiber, not enough human beings in the wet wheat Western diets get enough fiber. So we need about 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day in, you know, in a 30 gram ounce, which is you know, 30 gram or one ounce portion of quinoa, you're getting about five grams of fiber. So it's really high in fiber, really, really good for us. And it just makes things hold together really well, which is why we're gonna be using it. So when it comes to the chia seeds, once again, you'll find them in, I've got two types of colors in there, as you can see. 
I've got white um, chia and I've also got black chia. Once again, nutritional content is very, very similar. Fiber content is very, very similar. Does not matter what color you can get when it comes to chemo or chia, just make sure that you get them because they're good ones to have in your pantry. So when it comes to the chia seeds, you want to add 120 grams of chia seeds into a bowl. And um, it's about 4.2 ounces of chia seeds. It's a good amount of chia seeds is going into this bread. And once you add it into a bowl, you're going to top it with 240 mils, and I have that here, of kombu water. Why are we using kombu water? Once again, nutrient dense. Kombu water helps with the healthy functioning of your thyroid, which helps to regulate your metabolism, which means when you've got a good metabolism, you're able to burn fat. So this is one of the things that why we use kombu water. And we're going to be putting 240 mils of kombu onto the chia. And just like the um, quinoa, we're just going to leave it to soak overnight. So just cover it all up, pop it into your fridge, and then the next day you've literally got this. See? <laughs> it's a gel. There is kombu in there. Hard to believe, but there is kombu in there that's been soaking overnight. So that once we've, you've done the soak, that's the hardest part of this entire process, by the way. Everything's easy after this. So once you have done the soak, you want to drain the liquid from, because remember, this is just water. You want to drain the liquid from the quinoa. So definitely use a sieve when you do this, like what I'm doing, because you want to make sure that you shake out as much of that water as possible. So, you know, whether you're using a, a sieve like I have or a strainer and give it a little bit of a push, you know, let it drain there even for a couple of minutes. But usually if you just give it a little bit of a push, you can see that that liquid is coming out quite nicely, which is what we want. And then we're just going to set that aside in a bowl. The reason why we want to drain the liquid off is you, you want your bread to look like a bread. <laughs> when it's finished, if there's too much liquid, it can, it can be a little bit soggy. So give it a really good drain. And with this water as well, we're not going to use it again. We're just going to discard it. So it doesn't matter. Make sure you get all that liquid out. So it's really well soaked. It's been doing it overnight. And this is going to help with the next stage as well. And once again, as, as I was talking about, this phytic acid that is uh, naturally occurring inside the quinoa seed, inside the seed, is um, that the effects of phytic acid are lessened greatly by this process of soaking overnight. And literally what that means is now your body is going to be able to access all, that nu all those nutrients that is, that is so high in the quinoa just by that simple act of soaking overnight. So all of those go into there. And as I was saying, we're going to discard this liquid. Don't need that liquid. That can go away. That can get thrown away. And what I'm going to do now is just set aside some of the quinoa. Just like take like maybe a third of the quinoa and just, you know, or thereabouts, doesn't have to be exact, and just pop that off to the side. We're going to use that later. But what we're going to do now is we're going to mix all the ingredients for the bread into here. So take the quinoa, add that really gel-like <laughs> Uh, chia seeds and you can sort of see it's really jelly which is exactly what you want chia seeds to do because one of their really really cool abilities is chia can um can soak up 10 times their weight in water so they, they start off with like this little seed as you saw before and then they end up with this gel like consistency over them so they're very very smart and now that they're at this gel stage you can kind of see already that our bread is like almost coming together just a little bit. All right, where is my? Don't know where my scales are. We're gonna we're gonna wing it. <laughs> I don't I don't think I have to measure too much. All right, so mix that together well, and then you're gonna take either some um, extra virgin olive oil, or you could use extra virgin avocado oil as well. Up to you. And you're gonna add about 60 mils, which is two ounces which is around about that. <laughs> like I said, I don't know where my scales are, but I think that, that looks like about 60 mils to me. Give it another stir. We're gonna um, add even more fiber. We're also gonna help to balance out the flavors and we've got our sweet as fiber syrup. And you just wanna add in a good tablespoon of our fiber syrup. That's really gonna help with the texture of this bread as well. So that goes in. Let's also add in some baking soda. Or bicarbonate of soda you just want one teaspoon of baking soda goes in there as well 
And to make sure that baking soda reacts, remember how important that is? We're going to use some acid. And by way of acid, we're going to be using a bit of fresh lemon juice. And you just want to add two tablespoons. Watch what happens when I add the lemon juice straight onto the baking soda. You can see that in there. So two tablespoons. Can you see it all fizzing up? That is helping that baking soda to now activate, which is what we want it to do. It's going to help to give this bread really good color, which is fantastic. So that goes in. Let's add a little bit of salt as well. About half a teaspoon of our wonderful mineral salt. That is going to go in. And then we're just going to give it all a bit of a mix. Told you it was easy. <laughs> the hardest part is honestly having to, to remember to start the night before so you can soak your quinoa and soak your chia seeds. So that really is the hardest part. Once you've nailed that timing, you, oh, this is so easy to make. There's no yeast, there's no nuts, there's no, you know, there's no proofing. None of that sort of business has to happen. All right, really well mixed, which is perfect. We're going to do one more job to this. One more little job. And that is, you will need a, a food processor for this recipe. You will need a food processor. Because what we're going to be doing now is, depending on the size of your food processor, obviously, obviously just got a little handheld one. You want to fill it about halfway with the mixture. And then we're going to blend it until it's fairly smooth. So you, you'll see why you definitely, definitely need a food processor for this particular job. It takes about 30 seconds, so bear with me. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Okay, to stop and have a little, little bit of a look. You can see it's starting to change consistency already. Because what's you can see that's the original, and that's obviously processing for about 10 seconds. What's happening now is we're breaking up the quinoa and we're creating more of a dough, which is exactly what we need. So maybe another 15 to 20 seconds. Give it a this like this it's it's half smooth but it's you can see the um the the stickiness that has been now created in that so that is absolutely perfect so that is the next stage we need to get on to i need a bowl of course so taking a plastic spat uh, scraper it's the best way to get this stuff out because it looks it does it looks like bread dough now isn't it crazy just with that little bit of a blend but unfortunately, you do need a food processor for this. It does need to go through this action um, so that we get bread that holds together <laughs> basically when it bakes. So um, yes, you will definitely need a food processor for this one. It does all the work for you, which is great. And it lo literally looks like dough now. This is kind of the consistency that you are after, is this dough-like consistency. So we'll do it again. But my, my processor is, is small. That's why I'm doing it in two lots. If you've got a big food processor, chances are you can do it in one, all in one go. And remember, about 20 to 30 seconds. And that's all going to depend on the speed of your food processor. I'm doing mine on high. But remember the consistency you're after. Is it literally looks like bread dough now. Okay, here we go. Needs a little bit longer. I reckon we are good to go. And yes, just check out that, that texture. That's what you're after. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to put it back into this bowl here. Another big one. And it should literally look like a very sticky bread dough. But you'll be happy to know you don't have to mold this. <laughs> you don't have to mold it into a loaf or anything crazy like that, which is a, that would be very sticky. So into the bowl it goes. Let's also add in this one as well. Rid of you. And of course, let's not forget, we had that uh, leftover quinoa that we've kept whole. That can go in as well. This is going to help to give it wonderful texture. So everything goes in. And that is, that's probably the, the mixture that I made. That's pretty much it, apart from a good stir. 
just to make sure that the whole quinoa is mixed through the smoother dough-like mixture that you had. I told you guys this was easy. This is so simple and it makes such an amazing loaf of bread. It's just, oh, I love it when these recipes just come together and they work out so well. All right, well mixed. Grab yourself up a loaf tin. I've got quite a decent sized loaf tin there. It makes a good size amount of bread. Line it with a bit of non-stick baking paper and then just unceremoniously dump it in. I guess no proofing, <laughs> no nothing. So like that. All right. Smooth it off a little bit if you want to. Look, it's not. There's no raising agent. Remember this. So you're not going to get a bread that's going to dome up. It's going to be a very uh, dense loaf. But oh my gosh, it is so filling. It is so marvelous. All right, that goes in there like that. And then just to make it a little bit exciting, right? Just just to make it a little bit fabulous you can consider what you want to add on top. And we're going to go with seeds because basically this bread is all seeds. This is a seeded bread, superfood bread, superfood bread. So we're going to add seeds to the top. And it's up to you what seeds you add. I'm going to show you just a bit of a selection and then you can decide. So I have in here for flavor, I have fennel seeds. I have cumin seeds. I even have poppy seeds. Up to you guys, I'll leave it up to you. You could use uh, sesame seeds, these are black sesame seeds, nothing wrong with that. You could also consider, which I love, flax seeds, really good and high in fibre, once again, really, really high in fibre. And even if you want to, you can consider something like hemp seeds as well, which is a lovely healthy fat to add to our bread. So you choose what seeds you want to add. Like I said, it's completely up to you. And you want, to, you want about sort of six tablespoons of your chosen seeds in total. And I really like to, to sprinkle um, it, like get a good cover on top of the bread here. Because, you know, these, this is all good for you. This stuff here, all these seeds are just so good for you. So I'm going to do my flax seeds. I'm going to add a bit of fennel seeds just for flavor. You can go on top. This is almost like a bagel mix. If anyone's ever had a um, everything but the bagel seasoning, this is kind of... <laughs> Very similar to that. Let's go cumin. Just a few cumin seeds can go on top as well. And I love poppy seeds, so I'm going to be adding some poppy seeds. So I'll leave this up to you. But just give, your, give whatever seeds you decide to go with, just make sure that you give a good coverage. And it takes about six tablespoons or so of your chosen seeds. All right, all you've got to do now is uh, think about baking this gorgeous wee simple loaf. And this now goes into the oven. My oven is set on 160 degrees Celsius, which is 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And you want to pop that in for about 60 to 70 minutes. So over to the oven it goes. And once the 60 minutes is up, I suggest you take a little skewer and you insert it into the bread. And if that skewer comes out clean, your bread is cooked. But remember, all ovens are different. So it might take you 70 minutes. It may take you 75 minutes. It may take you 55 minutes. And what you have left, I know I've eaten half of it already. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. It was so delicious. Uh, what you have left is this gorgeous, bring it closer to you, gorgeous, gorgeous loaf of bread. Look at it. Well, that's kind of like a third of a loaf now. And you can see these wonderful seeds that we have on top. But look how easily it slices. It slices like a dream, let me tell you. It keeps incredibly well in the fridge. You just cover it with a little bit of glad wrap. But you can kind of see that we get this really decent slice of bread. It toasts incredibly well. You can have it with savory or you can even have it with sweet. I put some of my sugar-free raspberry lipstick jam on it. It was incredible. And what you literally have as a superfood in terms of the ingredients that are in here, the fiber content that's in here, the protein content that is in here, the uh, micronutrients as well from all those incredible seeds, you really are on a winner. So if you'd like to freeze this, you can do so. Um, just cut it in slices and then freeze it for up to three months. Um, it's, it keeps really well. Even if you don't freeze it, this will keep for at least seven days in the fridge. Because think about it, there's no animal products in here. There's really nothing in there to make it go off. So provided you keep that in the fridge well covered, it will stay gorgeous and soft 
and beautiful for at least seven days. So as far as I'm concerned, we are on a winner. With this one, I am gonna be putting this on high rotate in my house uh, for the next couple of weeks before the boost camp starts because this is a type of bread that I just love to have because I know it's incredibly good for my body. I know it's not gonna make me feel bloated and yucky that gluten does, but a word of caution, remember this, there is a lot of fiber in this bread and fiber can make us a little bit gassy. So word of warning, is you don't want to go overboard and eat too much because it might make you a little bit gassy. So you kind of, you know, less is more when it comes to a high fiber bread. Uh, definitely with this one as well. Um, share it around. People do love it. Even our kids love it. So there you go. This is my quinoa and chia loaf. I will be sharing the recipe with you guys if you'd like to request the PDF. I'll be sharing that tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen on our main recipe page for you to request to download. But in the meantime, I hope you stay well and I hope you stay safe. I look forward to seeing you back here in the kitchen. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make the most amazing apple cider vinegar lollies. I know it's exciting. The health benefits are incredible. I can't wait to share that recipe with you guys back here in the kitchen real soon. Until then, everyone take care. Be well, be safe and we'll see you soon.